Good evening. Welcome to News Now on TV360. I'm Thelma Okoro. Hours after suspected members of the dreaded Islamic sect Boko Haram laid siege on Damasudu Yubi state capital in Nigeria's northeast, a curfew has been imposed on the town. A statement issued by an advisor to the Yubi state governor on press affairs and information, Abdullahi Bego said the decision to impose a curfew on Tuesday had been taken as part of measures to enable the security agent, who it says did a great job yesterday repelling insurgents' attacks on the town to conclude their ongoing assignment. The 24-hour curfew takes effect immediately. All residents of the city are expected to remain indoors during the curfew. Governor Gaidam condemned Monday's attack, describing it as heinous and barbaric, and said that the onslaught had been repelled. The attack began when gunmen suspected to be Boko Haram insurgents attacked the state capital, resulting in a gun battle between them and security operatives that lasted for several hours. Troops eventually succeeded in repelling the attack and calm has now returned to the city. A federal high court in Abuja has dismissed a suit seeking the removal of Adamu Mwazu as the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the reinstatement of former chairman Bamanga Tucker. Justice Eva Chuku dismissed the case on Tuesday morning after hearing from both parties in the case. The suit had been instituted by a member of the PDP in Adamawa State, Ali Ugurin, but Tuku, who was a defendant in the suit, filed a counterclaim seeking the same set of main prayers like the plaintiff. Tuku argued that his resignation from office on January 15, 2014, failed to comply with the provisions of the party's constitution, which required that a 30-day pre-resignation notice must be given to the National Executive Committee of the party, the PDP, Wazo, and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, were joined as defendants in the suit. The judge, in his judgment, dismissed both the main suit and took his counterclaim, describing them as constituting an abuse of court process. Still on politics now, the All Progressives Congress, APC, has described the as the height of lawlessness, a second raid carried out on the party's data center in Ikeja by DSS on Monday night. A statement by spokesperson Alajilai Mohammed said the raid by over 40 armed DSS officers, despite a court order restraining the service from such action, showed that the DSS considers itself to be above the laws of the land, and this is totally condemnable. Narrating the incident, the party said the 40 armed DSS officers who came with rocks shoved the security personnel at the building aside and broke into the storage facility from where they carted away over 30 bags filled with APC membership registration forms. APC, the APC spokesperson said the second read came the, second, the same day it challenged the DSS to make public its findings after the first raid was widely condemned within and outside Nigeria, and described it as the worst political scandal in the nation's history. Nigerian actor Desmond Elliott has emerged winner of the All Progressives Congress primary election for the Lagos State House of Assembly. Elliott on Tuesday defeated Kabiru Lawa, who is currently running for a third term at the Assembly. This star will now represent Sulu constituents in the upcoming Lagos State House of Assembly election in 2015. Meanwhile, another entertainer was not so lucky. Kenny St. Brown lost out to Fola Jimmy Lai Mohammed for the Keja constituency. Mohammed is the son of National Publicity Secretary of the APC, Alaji Lai Mohammed. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola has opened a register where sex offenders in the state will be recorded. He signed an executive order to provide for compulsory reporting of actual or suspected child abuse and establishment of a sex offenders register at the state house of us at the state house secretariat Ikeja on Monday. He also identified Ali Mosho, Kosofe, Agege, Oshodi local government as the councils with the highest cases of sexual and gender-based violence crimes in the state. Fashola during his address at the event said women and children are the most vulnerable members of the society, saying this was why they decided to establish sex offender register and mandated reporting. Ade Ipaya, the 
Attorney General of the Commissioner for Justice, who was also there for the signing of the directive, revealed that the state government was prosecuting no fewer than 113 sexual violence cases across the high courts in the state. Fashola will be the first Nigerian governor to carry out such an initiative. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, News Now will continue. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would you, come, would you want to come back as a savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back to News Now. Nigeria's banking sector recorded a total number of 3,756 3, fraud cases involving the sum of 21.79 billion naira within the 2013 financial period. This is according to the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation in its 2013 annual report and statement of account for the banking sector. The corporation stated that the reported cases of 3,756 for 2013 represents an increase of 11.12% over the 3,380 fraud incidents with the sector recorded in 2012. The report, which was released on Tuesday, was jointly signed by the NDIC board chairman, Dr. Hassan Adamu, and the managing director, Umaru Ibrahim. The report said while the frequency of fraud cases rose by 11.12% within the period under review, the sector recorded a 20.8% increase in monetary value from $18.05 billion in 2012 to $21.79 billion in 2013. In terms of actual loss from these fraud cases, the report said the sum of $5.75 billion may not be recovered. The National Association of Government Approved Freight Forwarders on Tuesday said the federal government and port operators lost about 40 billion naira to the 11-day strike which crippled Apapa port last month. In a statement issued in Lagos by the Public Relations Officer of the Association, Simeon Umwonu, the board described the strike as needless. It however expressed concern over the long ship waiting time experience at the port during the strike. NAGAFF said it hoped the Nigerian port authorities would take advantage using its oversight functions to ensure that the country's ports are friendly and competitive. It added that the essence of primary objective of port concession is about bringing efficiency, competitiveness and reduction of cost prices. To a sad news now, suspected militant of Somalia's Al-Shabaab sect on Tuesday killed 36 Muslim quarry workers near the North Kenyan town of Mandera. The attackers from the Al-Qaeda afflicted Affiliated group Tuesday shot the non-Muslims dead after separating them from Muslims, the residents in the area said. The latest attack comes nearly a week after members of the same Somalia-based group killed 28 people on a bus, targeting non-Muslims in the same area. The attack on the query workers took place early Tuesday. Witnesses said the, the victims were caught after midnight while sleeping on the tent in the quarry which is close to Mandera, which is about 15 miles from Mandera town. Al-Shabaab said it carried out the attack, blaming the involvement of Kenyan forces in Somalia and their ongoing atrocities during, such as the recent airstrikes on Muslims. The group put the number of killed at 40, higher than official accounts. Now, in response to the killings, President Uhuru Kenyatta replaced both the interior chief minister and the police chief. The Kenyan police chief, David Kimayo, resigned while the country's interior minister, Oli Lenku, was fired. The Lebanese army said they have detained the wife and daughter of ISIS terror group leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi as they crossed from Syria. The pair, whose names were not given, were picked up by military intelligence after entering Lebanon about 10 days ago. They were reportedly traveling with a fake passport when they were arrested and detained in coordination with foreign intelligence. 
A Lebanese security source said the arrest was a powerful card to apply pressure in negotiations to secure the release of over 27 members of the Lebanese security forces captured by ISIS, a view shared by Lebanese officials who confirmed the arrest. In June, Baghdadi was named the leader of the caliphate created by IS in parts of Syria and Iraq, where it controls. Last month, the group denied reports that he had been killed or injured in an airstrike led by U.S. states. There is currently no immediate reaction from the Islamic State militants on the current arrest. To sports now, Brazil legend Pele has left intensive care as he continues to recover from a urinary, urinary tract infection, I must say. The three-time World Cup winner was admitted to Sao Paulo's Albert Einstein Hospital on the 24th of November. A statement from the hospital said that 74-year-old is doing well without medical complications. His, med his kidney function will be assessed again on Wednesday, but he is lucid and eating well, the statement said. It also said he's receiving semi-intensive care in his room. A World Cup winner in 1958, 1962 and 1970, Pele was initially discharged from hospital on the 13th of November after surgery to remove kidney stones. Widely regarded as the greatest player of all time, he, re he scored a world record 1,281 goals in 1,363 games during his 21-year career, capped 91 times by Brazil. Scoring 77 goals, he was named FIFA's Player of the Century in 2000. Liverpool striker Mario Balotelli has apologized for a post on social media which appeared to contain anti-Semitic and racist references. The 24-year-old quickly deleted the post from his Instagram page of Nintendo computer game character Super Mario, but before his apology, the Italian had tweeted to deny the text of the post was offensive. The Football Association has asked Balotelli for his observation and given him until Friday to respond or face sanctions. The picture posted had an image of Super Mario with a heading, don't be a racist, with a text that appeared contrary to the heading. Liverpool, acknowledging the actions of the player, said they will speak to him. But responding to the criticism, Balotelli described reposting the image as, quote, my unlucky moment. He, however, has apologized for offending anyone with the said picture. We've come to the end of news now. We thank you very much for joining us. I'm Thelma Okoro.